still hung over from the memories of Vietnam. The 1980s produced a lot of entertainment where burly men fought guerrilla armies deep in jungle settings. It wasn't just movies like Rambo and Missing in Action, but also some of the most popular games, including everything from Akari Warriors to Commando to the original Metal Gear. The era of ALF and large shoulder pads may have come to an end, but Santa Clara Games hopes you still harbor an itch to return to the jungle and shoot the pixels out of everything that moves. The mission was so straightforward, travel east and break the world rice embargo. But as luck would have it, your helicopter is shot down and it's up to Lola Cruz and Mike Doe to break out of their jungle prison and shoot their way to victory. It may be a setup you've seen countless times, but it's an effective way to throw our heroes right into the middle of the action. Eight Days is a retro-inspired shooter that takes the tried and true Akari Warriors formula and staples on proper dual stick mechanics, either solo or through local co-op. Our heroes fight their way through five surprisingly long stages full of twists, turns, and great pixel art. It may be a wildly uneven quest that has you throwing your controller in frustration, but I have a hunch that fans of this type of shoot-em-up will get a kick out of where 8 Days takes them. What starts out as a fairly straightforward action game becomes a lot more interesting and engaging the longer it goes on. You go from the lush jungles of the first level, to industrial factories, barren deserts, dark caverns, and so much more. The developers at Santa Cruz Games do a good job of mixing things up throughout the level, so you probably won't get bored seeing the same objects over and over. That said, the stages do go on longer than I would have liked. Even though we're often seeing new locations, it sometimes feels like there's filler tossed in to extend the life of the game. This may be less of a problem when playing with a friend, but the solo experience can feel like a real chore at times. There are a couple of issues that keep this from being a great single player action game. This is the kind of quest where the game will save every time you enter a new room. While this type of checkpointing may sound helpful, it has a real tendency of biting you on the ass. There were so many times when I entered a room with only a single hit point, doomed to die with the very next shot. But instead of respawning with full health, we have to figure out how to complete the room without taking even a single hit. That's not an easy task. This goes from merely inconvenient to downright cruel in later stages. Instead of dealing with small rooms, we'll need to clear out massive areas without taking damage. There were times when I went for 10 or 15 minutes before dying, only to then lose all of that progress. This is made worse by the enemy's large bullets and narrow pathways. It always felt like the developers were purposely holding back on powerful weapons and health items. Despite some incredibly frustrating moments, I was always curious to see where the mission would take us next. It's not just the retro look, but also the large bosses and new settings. Eight Days is a game bursting with personality, and the developers do a good job of planting seeds from one stage to the next. Right from the very beginning, it's clear that there's more going on than you might expect and I enjoyed seeing the way the game pays off some of those early hints. From the throwback visuals to the way the story plays out, there's a lot to like about 8 Days. Sadly, it's marred by a frustrating single player experience that doesn't feature enough health pickups and has some bad checkpointing. It doesn't do much you haven't seen countless times before, but fans of the genre will have a good time fighting through all 8 Days. Hey, thanks for watching our review. This is going to be a week full of content, including a very interesting look at a game called Lost World Zero. We also just posted a lengthy look at Final Fight vs. Streets of Rage, where we used classic game magazines to figure out which series is best. I also have more reviews lined up, including a look at Dax and Kerbal Space Station. So do me a favor and click the subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.